Hello. Uh, thank you to be here today. We're going to start. We're going to talk about NFC payments, the auto relay and replay attacks. Basically, who am, who am I? I am a security researcher, a freelancer. I'm working in California. Uh, I present here in DAPCON like two years ago about Samsung Pay. Also, last year, I present about exploiting all max information with Bluetooth audio. This is my third time in DAPCON in a row. Uh, I'm probably co founder of Women in Tech Fund, which basically is a foundation that helps women to come to a conference like security and technology calls. Basically, this tag is how we can move transaction from one place to another, and we are going to research about how we can implement replay attacks and relays using this technology, and of course, using open source tools to do that. In this case, I'm using a same device to move one transaction from one device, from in this case, a Samsung device acting as POS on a Samsung Pay uh, technology. A little bit about the content of this stack. It's about an intro to NFC. We're going to talk about MEV flow process and also the fraud vector of this technology. We're going to talk about also the previous work from um, Peter Fillmore and Mr. Roland. Also about the NFC emulation, which is one of the keys on this, uh, in these attacks. Replay attacks from, in this case, I'm going to use uh, Google Pay Flow and relay attacks for any kind of device, implementing HTC or secure elements for Apple Pay. Also, how we can strike chips data with implementing NFC. A new attack that I call a relay for replay, I also call it a smart relay attacks, and how this could affect new technology to come. Basically, NFC technology, it's, uh, it's part of like you can have two devices that they need to be close to each other to make a transaction or a communication between of them. We're talking about 10, 10 centimeters. But that doesn't mean that we can make an amplitude of this signal to communicate two devices in the low range. NFC is in the uh, high frequency and the RFID spectrum. Basically, it's implementing passive technology. One of the characteristics of NFC technology and the payment systems is that it implements 13.56 megahertz passive mode, which basically it, it needs another device to boot up the another, um, for example, in this case, a, it could be the cell phone or a, a smart card, credit card. Um, it's widely implemented. Basically, many devices implement NFC, and it use the ISO 14438A. In this particular case, we're going to talk it, uh, just about bank systems. Uh, one of the main questions that many people ask is uh, how this process start. Basically, when you approach to a terminal to make a, a payment, the terminal start the transaction, not the smart card or the device like Apple Pay or Samsung Pay. Always the terminal start the, the communication with the devices. For example, this is a, um, a transaction implementing the Fitbit and smartwatch. Basically, it's just to have in mind how this works. Basically, you are in the shell, you test a command, and the system responds back. It could be with right answer or wrong answer, but basically, it's in the way that it works. With four commands, we can make a transaction, basically. This is how NFC works. We're going to get in details about these transactions in a few slides. A little bit about the MEF flow, how this transaction works. The POS detects the, the, the card or the smart card, list the applications, select the applications, get data, implements the fraud vectors, also the managed risk, some actions from the card and for the POS simultaneously, and after that, the complete transaction. The complete tra transaction doesn't mean it could be a successful transaction, it could be a declined transaction, but the transaction has to be finished some way or another. A little bit about the tokenization process, Basically, a tokenization process is how you convert a physical card to a virtual credit card. This process basically is when you're making a payment with Samsung Pay, let's say, uh, every time you're making a purchase, the system is generating a new card. This is for, uh, to avoid fraud attacks. For example, if someone is able to intercept a token, he can use just for one time, but not for more times. 
The idea of this tokenization process is to add security to the physical cards. Instead of using the physical card numbers, we are using scramble data, let's say. How the tokenization process works? Basically, when you use your cell phone to make a payment, it could be Apple Pay or Samsung Pay or whatever, uh, the terminal detects the token, and this token is sent to the payment network, and we have another party working on it, which basically is a token service provider, which relates the token with the physical physical card number. After after it relates the transaction, it's sent out to the bank, and it accepts or reclines the transaction. Some of the technology about uh, NFC, basically, we have a secure element for Apple Pay, Samsung Pay, and Hotscar emulation for Google Pay, the new version of Android Pay. Some of the characteristics of this technology is that secure element is more than 20 years implemented. He, ha he has a smart card, receipt access, and also he has self encryption. Self encryption, I mean, you have cryptograms inside of the, of the device so you can uh, to validate the transactions. In the hot card emulation on our, on our side, we have limit use keys, tokenization process, cloud cryptograms, and transaction risk analysis. And this part is like the Google Pay technology. Basically, when you add your card to the Google Pay, it downloads four or five tokens to your device, and you can use these tokens to make payments. After you finish this pile of tokens, it downloads, mo downloads more, more tokens, so you can use them. Then it's a fraud vector. The motivation about this attack is because you have low limits, but higher in other countries. Basically, if you stole $50 in the United States, if you move this $50 to another country, that $50 will increase in value in another country. You don't have any ad additional calculator verification, which basically, if it's if it less than $50, you'll need a PIN or a signature or anything like that. And also, from my perspective, the fraud is considered an accepted risk. And the main thing is that NFC is implemented in many IoT devices. Attack is the wild. We noticed that a few years ago, in 2015, one guy was in the metro on the subway using a POS, basically, to, make, to get close to the people and try to get the NFC transactions, making offline transactions. And after that, he convalidated them with, with using online transactions. The previous work about this NFC, Basically, uh, Mr. Roland presented about a replay attack about MasterCard in 2013, which he said, if you implement the uni unique number to zero, you can, let's say, guess it, which is going to be the CBC. And in for four transactions, three of them go went through. So it was a very good attack. In 2015, Peter Fillmore presented Black Hat about how you can turn on the master bit and the IP Instead of using all the security and the NFC transaction, you can reduce it to the max stripe level, which basically you can use this against the Visa card. Also about in the hardware side, the previous were in that last year, the men in the NFC, guys from, from Asia present two boards, which basically was a client on a uh, server, which you can implement to make a relay attack using SDR technology. Basically it's a specific channel to make this, this relay attack. Some of the limitations, it was a pr private prototype, and it has a special design. Let's talk a little bit about NFC emulation. NFC emulation is where you can have a NFC reader and behaves like a smart card, or like NFC. Basically, NFC has three modes, which is reader and writer, peer-to-peer -peer communications, and emulation mode. And you can change the configuration of the reader to do different things. So the art of this part is how we can put the emulation mode in a NFC reader. In this case, it's a ACR122. Basically, you can initialize as target this uh, NFC reader implementing some NAT commands or APD commands. You can, you, you can see all these commands in the data sheet of this reader. But thanks to Adam Lurier, he created a library which basically you have all the commands to this reader, so you can put it right away into emulation mode. Also, he has a Python script to emulate something just for testing, basically. So having this idea, how we can make a replay attack? A replay attack basically is how we can block a transaction 
from a device to the POS or the point of sale system or the terminal, uh, we can intercept that token. Intercepting the token is like, I can have that, that transaction and replay it later, probably two or three hours later in different location. So um, I present a bug to Google Pay. I discovered a bug about that you can make a replace in the Google Pay this year. And I uh, basically reported and the answer that I got was it, it, could, it couldn't be fixed because it, it, it's intent behavior of the payment system. Basically, the flexibility that we have in the system who gets to the vulnerabilities that we can find in different devices. So for example, in this case, I'm going to make a replay attack. I have this Google Pay device. And I have a Square device, which I'm going to validate the transaction. This one is a pocket chip, which I have a HCR122, which basically is going to act a reader initially to read the transaction from Google Pay. I'm going to capture the token. And after that, I'm going to put the same reader in emulation mode. So I'm going to emulate the transaction using the Square, um, in this case, MAPOS, to make a transaction for $1.01 and the trans transaction goes through. Basically, this type of attack, I'm using, I get the transaction, and basically I convert it to magnetic uh, Stripe data transaction, putting lower the levels of security of the NFC. It could be with different kind of devices. This example was a pocket chip, but it could be an Arduino, it could be um, Raspberry Pi, or any other devices. In this case, it's a Raspberry Pi implementing a PM532 chip, which basically is very cheap, around $15. <coughs> but this is the project that I made. It was called NF Copy. Basically, it's a Raspberry Pi Zero, ACR122, a leap of 3.7 volts, and a booster, which basically moves the 3.7 volts to 5 volts. Some of the characteristic of this attack is that all uh, this uh, device is portable. Is you have a reader and emulator simultaneously. You have Wi-Fi connectivity, and of course, it's customizable. So let's try to make a replay demo. Basically, in this case, oh, sorry, I have a Google Pay, and I'm going to use a transaction, but in different ATM. In this case, a grocery machine. I'm going to capture the token of Google Pay using the same technique, intercepting the transaction, moving the, lowering the security level and the transaction, I make a payment and a terminal. This kind of transaction goes through because we are implementing a, I can say, cryptogram that is already validated before, which basically is going to go through the transaction. I call it cloud validated cryptograms. Let's talk a little bit about relay attacks. Relay attacks when you have, it's a man in the middle, and you have two nodes. Basically, you have, need two devices, one close to the NFC device, and another one close to the MPOS or POS or terminal, which is going to make a transaction in the same, in the same time that the another person is making them. If we talk about the distance between the two devices, we can increase the, this distance implementing SDR, for example, or Wi-Fi connectivity. But many people start using SDR because you have a specific channel to make a relay attack. Some of the inconvenience of this attack is that you have delays and timeouts in the protocol. MAVS specifies that you, can make, you need to make a transaction in 500 milliseconds, but that's enforced uh, the terminal, the POS, to finish the transactions if it, take, if it takes longer, which basically I can make transactions in 4.5 seconds without any problem. That means if I'm making a relay, it could take two or three seconds to make the transaction and it's going to go through. For this, for this um, project, I make a call, project called Sentinels, which basically is the same kind of device I use for the NFC copy, but I add a SDR uh, trans receiver, which basically says CC1101. The CC1101 basically is a cheap device, $5 anyway. It has different frequencies, different modulations. I'm not using that one because it's powerful. I'm using it because it's cheap. So you can try it at home. 
The configuration to connect to the Raspberry Pi is very straightforward. It's using the SPI protocol. But we noticed that we have many cables, so we designed a, a small board so you can plug and play with it. Another inconvenient in the library of this CC1101 is that you only can send 60 bytes in each packet. So, for example, if we have an, a common APDU for 200, 200 bytes, we need to make chunks of it. Basically, chunks of 60 bytes. We are in time and waiting time of this kind of attack, but uh, because the MEV flexibility, we can make a relay attack. So basically, the characteristic of this, uh, this project is that we have two readers and two emulators simultaneously, Wi-Fi connectivity, customizable, a chip, and we have a uh, SDR support, which basically is the CC1101. So the demo of this attack, basically, I'm using a, this device, as MPOS, it's acting a, a terminal, and I'm going to make a, a relay attack. You are going to see where is another device that I, I'm getting this data, which basically is a, a, smart, a smart card from Visa. Sorry, it's kind of framing a little bit. So you see it was very quickly a transmission implementing the SDR. In less than one second, you can have it, all the data. And we are talking about around 15 meters of distance. So basically, here is another, the another device, and the smart card is under it. Another type of attack I want to talk about is how to extract data from chip and pin cards using NFC. If we think about it, we have two different ISOs. We have contact and contactless but they share the same APDU layer, which basically you can send commands from one technology to another, and they are going to respond. It could be wrong answer or right answer, but they are going to respond. It's like when you are making a SQL injection and you get these kind of errors, and you know that something is there. It's the same thing with APDUs. For this project, I change the reader. Instead of using the ACR-122, I'm using a USB smart card reader. And I changed the protocol. Instead of using a block, block byte protocol, I'm using a um, byte to byte protocol. So let's play a demo to show you how this works. Basically, it's a relay attack. In this place, we have the, the car connected to the USB. We have the SDR connection to this device. And uh, this device, the Samsung device, is going to act as POS or terminal. So I'm going to run it. The, MPOS is going to start sending NFC commands, and you can see it start reading the chip and pin car uh, data, which could be useful to strike, let's, let's say, um, RSA um, certificates, but also data like the name of the card, which is user 2, and things like that. So let's talk a little bit about relay for replay attacks. Basically, relay for replay attacks, how we can make a smart relays. If we talk about secure elements, which is one of the best secure technologies, the main point about this technology is yeah, you cannot make a replay attack. Why? Because basically, when you intercept a transaction, it has a cryptogram on it, which basically is a challenge that the terminal sends to the device, and the, the device has to answer it correctly at the same time. So in this particular case, I'm using a Fitbit Ionic. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about this. And this part, where is the red tag, which basically is the cryptogram section, and the blue one, which basically is the application transaction counter, are the two only things that are changing in each transaction and the secure element. So the question here is, I intercept a transaction, and when the terminal send me the challenge and I answer with the capture transaction, it's going to be a different cryptogram or it's not going to be the right cryptogram. So the transaction is going to be declined. But what happens if we intercept the transaction and we make a relay just using the cryptogram and the application transaction counter? So instead of making a relay with hundreds and hundreds of bytes, 
we just need 20 bytes, which basically are the cryptogram and the application transaction counter. So let's say I capture a, a transaction from someone using secure element, and I have, I put it in one of the devices. So let's say they, I have computer one and computer two. When the computer, when the POS asks me for the PPC, the computer is going to answer with a previous safe transaction. And after I got the challenge, the computer one is going to send the challenge to computer two and the computer two to the smart device, and it's going to be, get it straightforward with a cryptogram and transmit it back to the POS. So in this case, I'm using this previous safe data to have less time making the relay attack, which basically I improve it like in three seconds. So instead of using like, not, let's say, 3.5 seconds, I can do it in 1.5 using this technique for secure elements. So basically, I have a, a smartwatch, the Fitbit. I already have a previous, previous uh, safe transaction. Uh, probably you can see in the back there, which all the APDUs. And I'm going to run it using a secure element of this, of this tool. When I run it, instead of sending all the data back and forward, I am because just coming to get the cryptogram on the application transaction counter, and the transaction is approved. Because the only thing that changed in the transaction is the cryptogram and the application transaction counter. So if after all of these relay and replay attacks, you, you think that you can make it better, probably you can use something like this, which is more interesting than I saw in, in, uh, in Twitter. You get close to the person and get a transaction accepted. So about new technology. We have new technology for the cars implementing NFC, basically to get into the cars. And some of the, some of the boards that are implementing uses NFC how this could affect this new technology to come. We, if they are going, not going to use uh, a, let's say, in this case, uh, encryption and the communication, we're going to have problems making relays and uh, replay attacks. This is a protocol, the board I am implementing, the NSC 3320, which basically, they are in some cards already. So um, I don't have the, I didn't have the chance to test it, but I would love to do it. So new attack vectors. We can make relay with a new technology like LoRa's. She's cheap and very useful. In this particular case, I have a smart card. I'm using a, uh, another device, the Samsung, behaving as MPOS, and I can get the data from the car, basically, using this technology. With LoRa, you can cap kilometers of distance in some of the cases, depending on how it's set up. Also, let's talk a little bit about how you can use NFC in web browsers, which is something that nobody talks about it. Many people start trying to work with ACR-122 connecting to the, to the computer and trying to use an library in the, in the browsers, but they have many problems to communicate it with it. I found a reason to it. I found that uh, they have experimental web platform in the Chrome that you can use USB, and they have a, a specific library to do that. And in this library, they have support for Arduinos already. So what about instead of connecting directly the NFC reader, what about you connect the NFC and the Arduino, and we communicate with the Arduino, and the Arduino communicates with the NFC. So basically, it's very straightforward um, technology. You can have uh, basically a terminal in the web browser and communicate with the NFC reader to put the in emulation mode, peer-to-peer -peer communication, or whatever. So in this case, uh, we're going to read, uh, we're going to emulate an NFC transaction using a web browser. So in this case, I'm going to run a script using the Chrome, and I can get a transaction very quickly. So this is a new type of attack that you can use it in different web browser, in this case, Chrome web browser. Some of the protocols that probably could implement to, to prevent this type of attacks is distance-bound distance protocols, which is very difficult. 
because um, you need to know the timing exactly when a transaction is happening. And it's very difficult if you have uh, many different uh, applications open already at the same time you're making a transaction, the transaction can be um, relay, um, have delayed. So it's very, very difficult to do it. What we need basically is a new update of the MEV in the United States and all America continent. But the problem, the problem is the hardware. Basically, you make an update in the MEV, you need to uh, replace all this hardware for all the stores, which basically is very difficult, very expensive. So some of the conclusion of this stack, an attacker that doesn't need a specialized sophisticated hardware or software to make fraudulent transactions. A mobile phone can be used as simple as sniffer. Also, you can use a replayer to make a transaction. And this uh, flexibility that we have in the system. Uh, if the companies keep designing this product with the proper protections against the new technology that's come, they're going to be affected for many years. Please, if you have any questions, feel free to go. Sorry. It doesn't matter which car. It, it could be any kind of Visa car, Master car, or whatever. I'm using Wells Fargo because it's the only I have in my hand. I need Spire, so you can you, you get it. You can use it. You have any questions? Thank you. Thank you to be here. We appreciate it.